Hello. In a previous video, I showed you the basics of adding a new page or post to your WordPress site. Now, in this video, we're going, we're going to go into a bit more detail. So, let's see where we're getting started. First of all, th this is a new uh, a new page. When you're adding a new page, this is the screen. Now, we've already done, or we've, we've discussed these buttons and adding the text and the, uh, the headline here. But there's more to it than that. So the first thing you need to do on your edit page or edit post page where you're adding a new page, click this that says screen options and make sure all of the boxes are ticked. These, bo these tick boxes turn on and off these things on the page. So if we tick the tick box for page attributes, it disappears. Tick the box for featured image, that disappears. Just add them back. Now the point is, if you don't know much, if you're new to WordPress and you haven't ticked all of the boxes, there'll be options that you didn't know were available. So make sure you tick all of the boxes and then all the options will be in view, you'll be able to see them. This this is worth ticking as well, this help button. It, it doesn't give you much help, but there's, it's worth reading just this little bit here. So that's the screen options and the help button. Next we want to if this here when you make a new page or a post this title of the page will be added to the url of your website or the, the web page or post and you can change that just click in that box there change whatever you want it to be so instead of that being uh, will you give feedback please you could just put feedback or whatever you want it to be you can change it and then just click the ok button that people do that for search engine optimization and to make the URL shorter and all sorts. You'll you'll start to realise why they do that when you get a bit more into WordPress. A lot of the things I'm showing you now, I'm, I'm going to actually make individual videos at a later date about them because I can't show you everything on this page all in one go. There's just too much of it. I just want to give you a good overview of what um, what all the buttons do. So on we go to this one that says publish. Now what you can do with this one. You can, uh, all these little ones that say edit, you've got to click the edit button to open it up. So there we go. We can save this as a draft or pending review. Or if we click this push publish button here, it will publish it so it's live on the internet. So if you want to save it as a draft, you think, well, I'm not quite happy with that post. Just choose that one, save as draft, click OK. Um, move on to the next one which is visibility now you'll find this one useful you can have it so it's page is publicly visible so everybody on the internet can see it you can password protect it so that if you've got say a download page or something where you make it want to make it a bit more difficult for people to see that page um, click that password protect and then type a password in there and then you'll have to tell people the password so they can actually access the page. When they go to that page, there'll be just a, a box that says, uh, please put in your password. Um, and then you can make it private. So only people who you can invite can, can see the page. I'll deal with all these in a future video. Right, now we're on to publish. And this is the date that it's published on. So what you can do, you can set it so that it's not published yet but it will be on a certain date. So you can change the date or the time when it's going to be published. So on we go, page attributes. Now these are just for pages, not for posts. Um, and what you can do with this one, you can set the template to be a different template. So the, in this particular theme, which is 2011, there's the default template, which is like a one column page template showcase which is quite a fancy template with a lot of stuff inside it and there's a sidebar template which is just one column and a sidebar and you can choose which which layout you want for each individual page featured image all you do is just click the button and upload an image now we'll just wait for this to go through and i'll show you uh, just pick an image there and upload it from your computer now let's see this image here is a featured image in this particular theme, this is 2011 theme, and in this particular theme, this is where the featured image goes. But it's got to be a thousand wide by 288 pixels high before it can be a featured image in that particular place. Featured images also go in this position here. Now this is a, a sticky post, and so 
I, I, you, I wouldn't try using featured image in both of those at the same time. You can do it and you can have that big image there that also appears here, which is not like a good idea. But we'll go through that in a, a future video because it is a bit complicated. Right, where did we get to? Featured image, let's get onto these bits down here. These are under the post. So, writing helper, I wouldn't use that until you're a bit more uh, well acquainted with WordPress because you can actually damage the page. If you if you click this button, it will copy this page, that whichever page you're on, and effectively remove the, the page that you're copying. The only way to use that is to make a brand new post or page and then click writing helper. But I would I would not use that until you understand more about how it works because you can damage posts you've already made. All it really does, it copies the um, the tags and the categories from an old post. Right, request feedback. This only appears if the page is not published. I'll publish the page in a minute and you'll see. Um, now what you can do with this, you can ask one of your friends to, you can say, oh I've made a new page or post, will you tell me what you think of it? And you put their email addresses in there and then just send a request and it will just send them a little email saying will you you know will you help me do this now when I update the page when I publish the page this will disappear just wait for the server there we go yeah. well, it's not disappeared <laughs> usually it um let's have a look oh it's private let's let's make it public now we'll publish it there we go it's disappeared when you actually publish the page this request for feedback will disappear because it thinks that you've decided the page is okay or the post and you want to publish it Discussion, allow comments and trackbacks. Comments are what you, when you see on a lot of blogs, you see the people, other people have written in saying, oh, great post, I like this, you know, it's really useful to me. So you could just tick that box and it either allows or doesn't allow comments on your website. Trackbacks and pings are a way to tell other website owners that you've linked to their website. These, this we will do an old video about this because it is actually it's very useful and it's a bit complicated. Comments that just tells us that there's uh, no comments on this page yet. The slug, when we look to that bit at the top there, this is the slug, which is a lovely name, isn't it? Um, but that's the slug is just that bit of the URL that you can change. It just happens to be down here as well author if you've got many authors in one blog you can choose which author you want to publish this page revisions you might find useful because what you can do if you make a mess of a page you can actually go back uh, to a different one so you can restore a different a page from a different one which will we'll probably do a video about that at some time in the future so let's see if we can go back to where we were and sharing buttons. Now, I'll just show you what sharing buttons look like. See these buttons here? If somebody's viewing your blog as a Facebook account and they might think, oh, I like that. So they click the share this button and that opens their, um, their WordPress, uh, their Facebook um, sort of login. So they can log in and tell people that like your Facebook, or your blog it works with LinkedIn there's loads of them you can set quite a lot of those um, so let's get back to where we were that was for the pages there's some slight differences with posts so we'll just go through what's different in a post in a post you've got these extra options this is format now I won't worry about that at the moment we'll do a video just about that in the future for now just click standard but you've got other ones like gallery, image gallery, or just an image, or quotes, or different things. But you can make an image gallery using the, the standard format, or you can make any of these really using the standard format. Well, uh, oh, oh, until you get to know what you're doing, use standard formats. 
uh, categories that's just a way to categorize the things on your website it makes it easier to find things and to uh, to put things into lists and tags do the same thing um, let's see what else we've got now oh, this excerpt this is only on posts I think um, excerpt goes into if you, if you know one RSS feed is really simple syndication this excerpt is what's used in a, an RSS feed it's used in other places as well but that's a bit, com bit complicated for what we're doing right now I might come back to that in a future video um, this track back one is really it's, it's for what they call legacy device uh, system so it's for old-fashioned blogs so you've got that track backs there and you've got track backs here so I would just ignore this one for the, certainly for the time being um, what else have we got or likes we've got likes and shares um, like is just a button where people can kick, click the button that, that they like your website it kind of um, it's a bit like the Facebook shares don't know if we've got one on there nope anyway I'll have to stop it there because we've got a limited amount of time and we're getting very near to it I do hope you found it useful do pop back and uh, have a look at some other videos thanks for watching bye